lord and lady of our house, but not married mm. and business partners. Well, they don't know the lord. I, um, left your soup. You disappeared for a bit. Sorry, I had to handle some things. I left your food on the, uh... I see. ...desk. I got it. Good. A little bit too busy there for me. I understand. Um, do you want me to, like, clear off one of the book's shelves for you? You can, you know... For what books? I don't know, in case you wanted to buy something, or... You I feel like me buying books is not gonna. <clears throat> I'm gonna buy too many, and then I'm not gonna have any place uh, to put them when we leave. Vision. Hello, Shriek. I hope I'm not help. interrupting. Nope. Just shooting the shit. How can I help? Good. Um, just hoping to collect you really quickly to talk about an order. Sure. Let me uh put this back in. Do you want to talk inside? Uh, you can come by my shop. Okay. <clears throat> Meet you there. Uh, yeah. Unless you're coming now. No, I can come now. Cool. I'll uh, be right back. It's your business. Hmm. Who is that? Friend from out of town. Run from out of town. Mm-hmm. 
Why is she staring daggers at me? <laughs> She's, uh, what's the word? Judgmental. Judgmental? Yeah. <laughs> it's a About? bit... Well, everything here, it's a bit of a shithole. She wasn't staring at the architecture, she was looking at me. It's the people, too. Don't worry, you're fine. What have you been- let me guess, you've just been telling him all kinds of things about me. <laughs> of course, because everything's about you, isn't it? I don't know, usually when someone stares daggers at me, it's because someone's talking about me behind my back. <laughs> you should have seen her at the uh, tavern earlier, she was staring daggers at everyone. Hmm. All right, who should go first, me or you, Sarah? I've got some talks about um, a friend of ours out in the woods. I don't know what you have planned. He's pointing at you. All right, then. I need to keep you abreast of some things that the Rubber Baron is up to and... <laughs> breast. ...some developments. <sighs> okay. So... I will just run you through the quick notes that I have here to make sure that, um... Chat, get ready. Too much time here. <clears throat> Keep all this with a level head and try not to think about it with any um, prior prejudices. This is just information. I'm not making any judgments on what we should or shouldn't do. Okay. But I might make a couple suggestions. So. I... Still apparently have a lot of his trust. To start off, at the very end of the meeting, he agreed... Well, he told me that if I ever wanted to meet him outside of the keep, all I had to do was ask. That's the level of trust he has in me right now. I can get him alone. Or at least with a few men. Okay. He talked about details. I gave him a lot of details about what's going on in the town, because his eyes and ears in the keep have been, um... Either apprehended, have gone silent, or are dead. I told him uh, about Mefru's status, that she's essentially an invalid, and this shocked him. Uh, he was shocked and genuinely saddened to hear this. I didn't tell him how we got that information. Don't worry. He... Uh, I told him about, um... The schism that's happening in the embassy, and now he's getting worried that he has to act sooner rather than later. He believes he has to make a move now, or soon, or else he might lose his chance to. That said, all of his men are preoccupied fortifying the stone and iron mines to make sure that um, they can protect their assets. He currently keeps some, a skeleton garrison, essentially... At his main keep, it is not heavily defended. The, the mines, however, are. Question. His yes. keep. That way. Past the cross oh. keys. We stumbled across it the other yes. day. Interesting. We didn't know what it was. You should be careful because there's traps everywhere out there. We were fighting orcs in the area. But go ahead. I see. Hmm. Yes, they're um, having issues with the orcs just like the rest of us. Interestingly, the robber baron, he knows... He sent me more of his notes. I can give you a copy. Essentially, when they were looking for something called Midas, it was some sort of artifact that was given that name because of its ability to turn things to gold. They came across a civic center in Moragarath, filled to the brim with untouched ledgers and books. They, um, weren't able to read much of it, but what they were able to glean was a lot of hidden, lost histories. He says he knows the way to this place like the back of his hand. He also said that this Midas that they were looking for was already taken, either by months or by a year. 
It's already gone. But, um, aside from that, he verified everything we've heard about him being of tyrants, though by his word only. He's given me, he's given us a sort of um, interesting proposal. He now believes that the brothers... Well, the brothers haven't done anything to alleviate the situation with their mother. He says it all makes sense now why she hasn't been out and about. Apparently she used to be a very alert woman, always about the town, always here and there doing things. So it surprised him that she was in grief for this long. I suggested if it was possible that one of the brothers was poisoning her and even he was aghast at the idea. Surprised that mm. any of them would be capable of doing that to their own blood. The man, from what I can gather, he has a moral backbone, though he is willing to break that when it comes to the uh, what he thinks is the securing of the stability of the province. I've been spending this time trying to get reads on him, you see. Um, he had a proposal. He gave me his word that if we could get him Mefru, that he would keep her safe in his keep. On, and move where his bed is, let her stay there, and then give my word that he would not use her as a pawn, but instead, once he was able to take over the keep, could use, or rather, he maintains that he wants to take this keep with relative, relatively low bloodshed, and not have to kill the brothers or the mother at all. Um, would let them leave if they give him the chance. He said that he was able to take the keep from the brothers. He would then be able to show the council, the state that Mephro is in. It would legitimize him, I'm sure, as the man who rescued the province from two quarreling tyrannical brothers who would go as low as poisoning their mother. Fucking hell, okay. It's a big plan and a big ask. But if we are unable to do that, he plans to act soon. I don't know how soon soon is, but... We've got to decide who we're taking sides with. Yeah, we'll have to run it by Tazim. Right. He did essentially plead with us to try and get the Baroness out. It's... I did see genuine sadness when we talked about Mephril. He was very close with the family. Speak of the devil, I think I hear him. Come on in! <laughs> Oh, I was looking for Sharik. Hmm. Well, you're just in time to, well, have to, have to have me recap everything I said. Some pretty heavy shit. Oh. Right. All right. Long story short, I've been trying to get a read on the Robber Baron, as you suggested. I brought up some things that we know to uh, aid my position with him. I was able to gain his trust enough to the point where he now will meet with me outside of the walls if I request it. That's Which good. is good. But there's another avenue, and I want you to consider this without any prior notions or... It's not at my behest. It is simply a suggestion or an idea. Something to be evaluated. Mefru, the lady at the keep, she is either being poisoned or she is gone, invalid, and she needs, uh, well, fuck me, I'm trying to rehash this again. Um, 
The robber baron was shocked to learn that. Genuinely shocked and saddened, and he begged me to get her out of there if I could. Said that he could place her up there in his keep, and he gave me his word and on his honor that he would not harm her or use her as a political puppet. It actually works in his favor not to, because if he can take the keep from the brothers, he can then show the council this invalid mother who is being kept by the tyrannical brothers and being used by them and solidify himself as basically the savior of the province. He strikes me as the kind of man who does have a moral compass and a backbone, but is willing to rationalize these sorts of heinous actions in order for the uh, greater establishment of stability. I feel generally his word might be trustworthy, at least to me. I waited till the end. You're fucking mad if you think you can trust this man. And the idea of putting the Baroness into the hands of a man called the Robber Baron, who has abandoned his dynasty, fractured their military power, and are using it to strangle the region. He is going to absolutely use them as a political prisoner. As soon as they have the person who reigns the dynasty in his hands, he will be able to sue them for peace. And if they do not take it, they will look very poorly in the eyes of the other dynasties. As I said, I wasn't advocating for any specific plan. But you did say that you feel we can trust him, which is concerning. I don't think that we can trust him with our lives. I think we can trust that he will do what it takes to take control of the barony. Like and if using we can provide a political him a, prisoner. If we can provide him a non-violent means to do so, then I believe it is an option, but not the best option. You will forgive the curtness of my words, Vezran. No, but I would actually, think I'm that grateful you for of it. all people would understand the disposition of the brothers should we engage in such a thing and they find out. Not even talking about a matter of morality. No, actually, I was um, hoping you would stay fast to your point. Well, <clears throat> the fact that the man is willing to do whatever it is that he thinks he has to and then rationalize it is a concern. Can I get to just drop something? I'll figure it out in a minute. I think your guard closed your window. Oh, it was supposed to be closed. But, um, regardless, I agree. I think that, um,. There is no way a man that influential and charismatic who can pull away half of the military had no way of curtailing this before it got out of control. I think it has to do with the fact that the only thing that I can wrap my mind around is that the only way that he can use the archways in the way that he wants is by taking control of the province so that he doesn't have to answer to any other barons. I don't even think it has to do that far. I can say that perhaps the man believes he's doing the right thing. Maybe. But the fact remains, he left the dynasty to rot when these boys needed his guidance the most, regardless of his outrage. He failed his lord, regardless of how he looks at it. Now that the lord himself was gone, the Castillan would have been the only one who would have been able to rein things in if the Baroness truly was either in that position then or became that. The time frame is strange. And to then what? Leave after this massacre at Belerno? He should have reeled them in. He should have pulled on the reins, corrected them, used his influence. Well, he obviously has. This feels like a power play. The strange thing is his second in command is the old captain of the Royal Guard. So quick to change allegiance, then. But that's the confusing thing, is if... 
if he has the pull enough to bring a man that is supposedly the integral backbone of the royal guard into his legions, maybe there's something more that we are not seeing. Disillusionment is a real thing. Well, there's other things. Um, I actually spoke to Kovaz earlier. I gave him some information on the um, instability of the em embassy, and uh, he wants me to keep an ear out for any sort of issues. I might be able to have an in with him. I'm well, I convinced him to let me speak to the emissaries in the keep, the elven ones. Laudia wants to put this whole thing together where the emissaries speak to the men at the clinic so that they can corroborate the story that happened at um, uh, the Major's death and then, I don't know, be in contact with each other. The fact that we even know about that is going to put a target on our back, won't it? Only on mine. Well, now we're involving the clinic staff. And they're going to have questions. We've already seen well, that they out once. Then I recommend you uh, talk to Laudia. She's actually bridged the gap dipl diplomatically between me and um, the surgeons and uh, the sergeants. They were about to take uh, bone saws to you the other day. According to them, it was a bluff. So, either way, I think it's important you speak to Laudia on this matter. She has this whole plan. She wants the Empire to be the ones to take out the robber baron, and I told her we can't let that happen, and... I have you to ask, to get do you really page. believe that? I need to know. No. With everything that we've seen and experienced, do you think it was a bluff? No. I do not believe that they're interested in diplomacy. As soon as their command structure is fixed, they're going to be an issue again. The whole point of what we're doing is to prevent that structure from being repaired. Then talk to Laudia because she wants to have it repaired and fast and have them sweep in and take care of everything. She needs to be on the same page as us. She wasn't here for that last meeting and um, she's been out on her own. She's been beaten to hell and her fingers are broken. So By an Imperial, no less, which blows me away. Like I said, she was raised by them. is a real thing. I will think on this. We're going to have to act soon, by the way, on your merchant friend. I need to talk to you. And come back when we're done. Talking about the cross keys, do we need to go now? You're gonna want Today, to be Heather. here for this. For what? Hmm? What I have to say to Vesrin. All right. I don't have much time, though. The crystal in your basement. I need it. It's not there anymore. Where is it? Why do you need it? Someone's looking for it. I highly doubt that. That drow matron that's roaming around? Keeping eyes on the drow in town, looking for slaves. That's not all they're looking for. Right, looking they're looking for something, for something old. That should not be in old. the hands of surface dwellers. That's an amethyst, isn't it? Why would she care about it's, an amethyst? It didn't it come into creation until a, a week ago. It's not old by any stretch of the imagination. They've been in here longer than I've had the thing. Longer than it's existed. How could they be well, looking for it? Well, she knows about it. So. How? How? What? This... It's got to be something else. It has to. If they knew I about it, know. they'd be... I'm sure my throat would already be slit in the night. I... Not if they don't know where it is. ...presented the theory. Then... Um, Venora was the talking. The timelines don't match. Venora uh, was talking uh, about when uh, Yindo was reaching out to Eshmithalos. 
and something really old and powerful, more older and more powerful than Falkreath stared back. It was like something was watching her. The theory is that the Elven Rangers are here to try and find her and or Fae, and the Drow would be the Underdark counter to that. That's my working theory, at least. The words that we... Whatever it might be, we need Sarah to keep finding out what this matron wants. None of us can do that. Which means I need the fucking crystal or she's going to kill all of us and enslave the ones that are purple skin. Where is this coming? It's just an amethyst. What does it matter? It's Let not just it. an amethyst. What do you mean? Let them have it. Exactly. And you don't need it. It doesn't belong here. And so, so what if it's not? And here. what if it's not what she's looking for? And she asks, "Where the hell did you get something like this from?" Okay, it's let's say it is what they're looking for. Back. What does that matter to us? Is it mm. how? You don't know what you are fucking with right now, best friend. In both capacities, the gem and this matron. You won't have time to play your little fucking politics on your tables, because she will kill every last one of us. Servith, I don't know what happened, but it is contained. That is no longer an issue, if you cannot tell. It has subsided. There is no issue with it. Whatever they are looking for is old, is what you said. Let them have the fucking thing. Why are we guarding it? What Truly, going why are we with? guarding it? Because we don't know what it does yet. It's going to get us killed. When you when you got it, How? it was just a bloody crystal, was it not? It's a fucking shadow seeping monster, Vestrin. What do you mean? You've seen it. Is I it know though? You've seen That's it. my I know question. It is it. not. It is just humming with a small amount of magical energy. Whatever rift or tear that was forming is healed, it is fine. I don't feel comfortable handing over something unknown. It could be a bomb for all we know. I have a lot more on the line than this. We all do. That's what I'm saying. Listen to me. To, she needs to leave us alone. If, if it's it's something that if they you want, give her what she's looking for, you she's just going to have more questions. Does nothing. You don't know this game. Have you even spoken to a I... female drow before besides me or Torty? I know hmm? that powerful people, when they get what they want, you they want more anything. of it. You don't know anything. You know of the surface. And you do. You do not know anything of down below. You don't know how it works. You don't know what you need to do to survive. You can't even breathe too loud. I beg your pardon, Seravith. But I'm sure that a few meters of dirt does not change the disposition of the wicked and powerful. So you'd rather see Torty in chains then? Because they will drag her back down there. Are you threatening me, or are you, you trying to? We are on the side. You. We are surrounded by threats, and we're bickering over the dumbest thing. Whatever that fucking thing is, give it up. It will give her an in with this woman. We find out what they want. Exactly. If it is a mistake, I will take the blame on my shoulders. But we cannot afford to be hunted down by literal assassins. She's the matron of a fucking house down there, Vesrin. Just like your uncle. She's the equivalent. She knows a lot. If something and she goes respects wrong, me. I give you my Can word, you I will do everything outside, possible to assist please. you. Is everything all right? For now, yes. I've trusted your mad schemes in the past. Let me have a mad, mad scheme schemes. for once. He's right. I don't need to elaborate further. You let me I handle the drow. I always defer to your judgment on these things. As I said, if it turns out I'm wrong, I will do whatever I must to help you make it right. But I do not think based off of what Faye has said, that it is something we must be concerned about them having. You said it was a rock with residue energy and that everything that was bad about it was closed, right? I, 
I guess the question I'm asking is... What are you, you going think... to tell her? How are you going to tell her you came across something like this? Sarah, what's your plan? As far as she knows, I have it. No one else is involved. And where did you stumble across something like this? Sure, you have to go. Purple gem. We'll be right back. Besserin. The only place I've ever seen purple gems. Our home. That's where they're formed. You know the thing is sealed right now. Bloody hell. I don't know what's going to happen. They will. If it happens, I'll do I don't have time for this. Oh. Like Olena <clears throat> well, told me to give you this. Olena. What? He puts it into your hand. It's a folded note. She uh, made me <laughs> write it during writing lessons today. It says, Today, in really bad writing, <clears throat> Olena kicked Kyla's ass in training. An ass has a big flourish on it. She's teaching me penmanship. <laughs> I would Most you if I knew excellent. I don't believe I know. Mm -hmm. Figured that would cheer ah. you up. Good day, long beans. I would stop and talk, but life is spinning on my head. Well, Lena. I'll be around more in the evening. Morden, I apologize. Truly. It's fine. I'll catch you at some point. Probably before I end up getting blasted, hopefully. <laughs> Either or. Plenty of time spent on the back foot. Yes, we have time to train. Yes, we have time to get materials, things, personnel, and money together. <laughs> but we need to plan for the eventuality when we're done with that. And we also need to figure out how we're going to seize power here in order to fund and provide for what comes next. Bando. Oh. Slow down off. <laughs> Crunch off you have a few moments. I would like to discuss a few things I'm aware of. Mm. Of course. Well, where shall we go? We shall go to the war room. That is where we shall go. I was hoping by this time that Sir Rishta would have returned. I am operating under the assumption that he is gone and gone for good. It pains my heart to think of such. But unfortunately, it's the only thing that makes sense. We have lost a great deal. But our momentum must not stop. It can't stop. It won't. There is too much at risk. Inside. Huh. <laughs> I wondered where that went. I saved it. I have compiled as much information as I can about Nodis, and, of course, about the Council. There are several members of the Council that are staunchly against the Imperium's position here, and they want them gone. 
We are in no position to send them missives or messages, unfortunately. We do not have any sort of renown behind us. But if we are able to gain control of Nodis by proxy through one of the brothers or something else, we will have that direct line to the Council. At the moment, Kovaz is the one who is against them, but I'm starting to trust him less and less. Perhaps this Marquis I've heard of might be a chance to contact the Council. Failing that, there must be a noble inside of Nodis willing to do so. Now, mm. 19, 18, probably 17 days at this point before the Imperium brings a ship here. They were warned about the things that I spoke to you about when we had come to Dimwater a few years ago, these creatures beneath the surface. They intend to burn it out. I assume that you have informed the Lady Omri. Good. The way that the Imperium deals with this is they send out the Inquisition. Anyone that they think might be infected or might carry this disease, they will burn them. And with good measure, unfortunately. Because when you die after you're sick, you raise as them once again. My concern is this will be brought to the Council. To someone who is in favor of this action. They will not care about a small province. They will allow it to be burned to the ground. We cannot allow how the Imperium to sway the Council before we do. That is what we must do, and we have to figure out how to do it, and soon. Now. Mm. Granted, well, we're all the way tucked into the corner here, away from the rest of Gradia. And the Council resides at Coricadis. Long swaths of the East are unaffected by the Imperium. There are two more diplomatic centers in the west. I have not yet figured out which cities they are, but it is safe to assume that the extended dynasties there will be pro-imperial. My fear is that the intent is to bring Gradia into the fold. I truly believe that. I think that they attempted to annex and control all of Ereland and failed. So now they are looking to do so in the long term in Gradia. And do the same thing they did in Ireland, round up the non-humans there and have them burned and killed and executed. We're in a position that's very difficult. Right to our north is Palamon. Palamon is the home to the Vapects. They are a dynasty that is opposed to the Radards, and if they invade here, there is no way that they will be resisted. Nodis has no walls and half a garrison. So either it is side with the Vapex, or flee Nodis. There is nowhere left to flee. Nowhere. We need to prevent that invasion, which means we need to talk to one of the brothers and find out what the emissary wants. Because there has been a Vapect emissary here for the past week, with no word. The only rumor is they've made a demand or war. One or the other. Something that you need to be aware of is we're right next to Black Rock Landing. Black Rock is where all the scum and pirates and loan sharks and men of that ilk coalesce. However, if what I've been told is to be believed, they have fleets of their own ships. They could either wind up being a problem, or we could find a ship in our hands if we were to lure some privateers this way and take care of them. But that is long term. There is a ship that is coming from Black Rock or Coricadis. Every other evening, it is sailing up the channel and stopping, waiting to deliver what seems to be either some refined serenity and Grandian spice. The Capitano here is involved in it. Yes, we want to deal with that and secure the province. But if we can seize that ship, we'll begin to extend our operations, travel to different places on the coast, to transport men, but even more importantly, we'll be able to do some work transporting cargo and not make silver per job, but making gold. If we can rack mm. up gold, we can get mercenaries. 
There is a company here called the Sordillo. They are about 800 strong. They are a hefty sum. But if we could leave with them, we would be much better off than when we are now. Currently, we only have about, what, three gold to our name? Four? Getting there, yeah. However, between Nardis and Palamon is a strategic location. It's called Carano. It is a military and mercantile garrison for the council. It has gone dark, some sort of magic fuckery, I think. Someone took a artifact of sorts and brought it there. Some sort of whole ordeal. Sooner or later, they're going to need help with that. We need to have our hands in as many issues of this province and be the ones to solve them in the eyes of the nobility. My intention is to try and get one of the barons to grant me a noble title here. If I am able to do so, then I will get my hands on properties, use them to generate revenue, curry favor with those who are more than some of the other nobles we've seen here. Men of their word, if they can be found. Doing that, Grady is all about coin. Coin, coin. Everything can be bought, including loyalty. While I will not put my heart and soul into mercenaries, they will fight for their contract. At least the larger companies in Grady are known for it. I will not squander them. If that comes to pass, we will be stepping out of the dark. That would make us de facto citizens of Gradia. The Imperium would not be allowed to touch us, especially <clears throat> if we were nobles. They would not be able to extradite us. Anyone who has survived, anyone who has been shattered, searching, hunted, we would be a beacon. All of our scattered knights and nobles, and those still stuck within the borders of the Empire, would make their way to us. And by the time came that we would land our ships on the border of Estagon, we would be able to pour from several ships, not just one. Astagon is in the middle of a revolt. Another whisper today. A third keep has fallen. Auxiliary forces are being pulled from surrounding provinces. The only surrounding provinces to Astagon is Giwen to the north and Imperial property to the east. There is nothing for them west but the ruins of Ireland. They're overextending. Wherever their legions are, it isn't where we want to go. But that is what is on the table. We need to secure this province, and I will not be able to do so alone. I cannot. I will need someone who can see into the courts better than I once we are involved. Someone more acclimated to the darker side of things. And I will need somebody that I know that no matter what happens, will never go back on their word. When we are in that position, I will need somebody who is willing to do what must be done to ensure our victory. For now, the province. We secure it. We're going to move on something in a few minutes. A merchant by the name of Colchis. Someone that Vezrin has discovered is supplying the Capitano with his goods. We've almost completely cut him off from his separate revenues. And when that ship comes in, we'll be able to find out how much they're bringing in, how many men are usually there. And the next time they come, we'll be ready to strike. Hopefully we can take the ship. Failing that, we'll have the information and proof that we need to make sure the Capitano hangs. Then we install someone loyal to us. We need somebody that is 
worthy of being put in that position. Once we have the Baron's ear, if we have someone who has proven themselves to be captain of the guard, or at least second in command for their efforts, it would serve us well in the long run. An acting position, of course, that we will be replaced when we depart. In the times to come, it's going to get very difficult. But we have several weeks before the enemy arrives in mass, and we must act. You all know how to get in here now. This place is a secret. There is only one other soul other than myself who knows of its existence. Everything in here is what I have compiled on the local Imperium. And the movements of the largest mercantile um, interests of some of the nobles here. History of the elves and their settlement on the border. And of course every single treaty that Nordis has been subject to in regards to the Imperium. They are an interesting read. I would go over them, because they are worrisome. <clears throat> I will start to call this place my home. Good. The next time we come in here, I look forward to having more of our kin at our side. Agreed. Who is the other soul that knows of this? The Longbeard, Morden. He's the one who understands these mechanisms. He built it for me. And you trust Mr. Morden? He owes me his life, and he will sell it dearly at my beck and call. We are friends, and have made an oath. All I need to hear, friend. I helped him recover his grandson's bones. Another friend of mine. He is our ally. And he has also promised me his clan when it is time to sail. We are not without options, my friends. This court is still very much alive. Now we have momentum. I want you to start looking into some of the mercenary actions around here. See if there are any freelancers that are worth bringing into the fold, if they can be trusted. It'll take a long time, and it might not be fruitful. But I don't think they would bat an eye at someone as skilled as yourself. Understood. Good. That is all I have. Nothing more. Make yourself acquainted, Crenshaw. I will need your... Advice and counsel. I shall start to read. And we shall leave you in peace for now. Just know that our time is limited. Very much so. Oh God, where is it? In the days to come, these decisions will show whether or not we're going to survive. We will leave you to it, Crenshaw. <clears throat> I will come seek you out in the morning. It's good to have you, my friend. It is good to be back. No. There are things that we have to figure out. We're going to deal with this merchant shortly. Let us go over to Vezrin. Get your armor. I will be with you shortly.
just go find Vezrin. It's time to make this caucus answer questions. I uh, got some more iron together, so now we have a couple more bars than just the four we had at the start of the day, just so you're aware. Good. That'll come in handy. Yeah. Mr. Harry? Mm? Doing well, I hope. To an extent. Uh, you have time to talk, or you need to be somewhere? Is it a short talk? Not exactly. And wait till I come back. I should not be gone long. I will make sure of it. I already owe you one. It's me. Come in. Well, I'll get the door. <sighs> oh, okay. There it open. Yeah, it's all right. Sit down, Tony. Vezrin, this is Lady Armory of Givon. Lady Armory, this is Vezrin. One of my closest friends and confidants. A pleasure. She is a knight a pleasure. for a noble. Knows her way around a blade very well. You should get your armor. If we're going to be dealing with that merchant like what you said, now is the time. All right. I'll wait for you here. Are and you bringing your uh, wild card? Do you want to go bust some heads? Yes. Or you have a hood, right? Oh. <sighs> it's not going to matter. It's not going to cover much. Hello, I. <laughs> the details of this, um, I haven't reviewed the notes since uh, we spoke. Can you remind me? I can. This merchant, Caucus. He is bringing this shipment of Grolin spice to the Capitano. We're not sure why it's separate from the ship that's been dropping it off. He might be using multiple streams, either to make sure he always meets his quota, or he's involved more than we think he is. That being said, this caucus, apparently, according to what you said from Zenek, talks to the Capitano directly. So whatever he's doing is outside of the Merchant's Guild. He's bringing a wagon to the back of the Cross Keys Inn. Said he had some men guarding it. That he'll be waiting for the Capitano to show up, which means we need to get there before the Capitano does. Take the goods and the man, get the fuck out of the cross keys, ask questions, deal with the loose end, and then hide what we have. All right, so then no witnesses. This is not a good man, so no. <clears throat> Might as well wear a hood anyway, just in case. Yeah. Make sure it's to stay I out of sight, obviously. Yeah. 
Yeah. By the way, Just I'm finished repairing your leather somewhere. armor. Excellent. I need it. As of right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have any leather or chain anymore, but um, <laughs> I do have steel plate. Hopefully it's not too well, clunky. Time to worry. All right. I told you, you mind helping me get into this thing? Uh, yep. Yeah. <sighs> Don't take too long, please. Bye. Yep. The two of them can be unorthodox. The other drow is not very quiet, but she's decent enough in a fight. Vezrin is... He can fight -ish. Okay. Sure, he doesn't get stabbed. Good. You sure you want to bring that book with you? I don't know why I have that on me. What is it? I hope it's something you're studying. I was actually I'll going to, own. yeah. And I got caught up in blacksmithing. Oh. I was gonna go sit somewhere and read. Is uh, everything all right? I know it's it here. Pick it up when you're done. kind of a beginner one, but what do you think? Just testing out the armor is all. Everybody mm -hmm. starts somewhere. Mm -hmm. oh, you've got I see. That. And everything. What can and I you say? haven't studied any of this previously. Looks good. I've skimmed it. I'd like to actually learn it, though. I figured if I sat down and really nice. honed in on it. Uh, Consonants and vowels. It'll be easy to get along. You have questions. I see. Uh, well, well, maybe. Sure. Got room for another? It's okay. Who the fuck is that? Oh. It's Cade. Yes. Yeah. Didn't they do great? Look at the armor. <sighs> yes, it's very flamboyant. Um... <laughs> Easy. I don't think uh. I can fit that many people in the wagon. I see. Very well. Ah. Then let's be on our way. Sorry, Cade. We do uh, have I my know, horse. Cade, you can come if you can I sprint know. and keep up. We have my horse, needs to be out <laughs> Truth be told, to run I usually today. prefer to run alongside the wagons. <laughs> Alright. Well, let's not waste any time then. You can come along then, kid. I would advise a helmet. <laughs> we'll meet, uh, meet together on the docks. I'll get a wagon ready. Bring your horse, I'll ride it. Okay. Unless you feel confident. Um... Let's give it a shot. What do you think? Just know. Just know there's a chance of you eating shit. Yep. I I wanna Yeah, I need to build the rapport with with him, so. Oh boy. Alright. Go get him. Meet us on the docks. Hurry up. Yep.
using legs. Okay. Don't make me look like an idiot, please. Going on. Nope, just uh, heading out of town for a bit, so your guys probably, I don't know, maybe get a drink or something. Oi, have you seen Sarah? Not in a while. If I see her, I can point her to you. Bollocks. Yeah, as well, if you see her. Yeah. Rosa, tell your old man, he said he wanted to talk to me. I'll remind him. He has yet to do so. Yes. Do you mind, I'm telling He asked, you. so... Of course. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Marcus. Feeling better? Where are you headed? I'll, I'll grab a horse. Yeah. Uh... We, name one more time? we have to ask Tazim. I don't know how many people we need for this. He should just be around the corner. He'll be showing up in a second. There he is. Very well, Elena. Look forward to working with him. Good day. Good day. Good day. And then I... then I just... Well, look at you. You've made it. Whoa. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what are you all up to? Oh, you know... About to do a quick snatch and grab. Oh. <clears throat> Shift so, yourself. It's a nice Sunday ride. This isn't a good oh. idea. <laughs> you want me on the back? We have enough for now. Anymore, and I think it makes it a bit suspicious. That's it's already it's suspicious. Thank you, Sir Crossing. Yeah. Just uh, be safe, yeah. Well, I know if you would. Me. Her. Yes. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> Do you need that hand, or can you... And get on a horse. Yeah, but like, you know, with like another rider and stuff. <sighs> well, just don't fucking fall off when I get on, I suppose, huh? Okay. He's a good horse. Be kind to him. I'm not, I'm not going to be... And I'm just, I'm still like learning to like... <laughs> You know, get him on on board with yeah, things. Well, I don't. And, yeah, well, okay. Well, you, you just right not there. not it's do fine. that. I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'll just sit back here. Oh my god, you killed my horse. <laughs> killed my foot. Shut up. Just going to respectfully hold this out. Guess it's a journey then. Hmm. <laughs> it's like a car. I know it's you told me this the last time we did this. The it's faster like you go, the better you can turn. That's how that works. Yeah. That's weird. I've realized that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sure you don't want me on the front? 
<laughs> oh my god. Shh. Uh, it's okay, buddy. I know. It's not me. It's okay. I'm still here. I'm still here, buddy. It's okay. Apparently they can. I'm gonna hit hey. every single one of you. Hey, are you sure? I can- I can- I- I- I do what Dazeem wants me to do. Above board, I have the worst motion sickness in the world on these things, so if we fall- Oh. Okay. <laughs> this is the dumbest I- Oh god. Oh. Shut the fuck up. I don't know what you're about to do. So, you said you wanted to talk to me. You find me when you need me. I will. see what's happening. Smash and grab, okay? No survivors. Bad man. No, last I time you said that. Like that. Yeah. Don't say it like that. <laughs> you, got, you told me this is... Oh. Make sure you don't fall off, Shariq. Keep your arms tight around the light. Holding, holding the saddle so, don't so I don't fall off respectfully. The saddle is not what you it's want. Nothing to about do. respect, you idiot. I don't, I don't want to pick you up. Well, interesting. Quick description of where we're going, what we're doing. Your father said the first thing. Cross Night Cuban. first. There is a right. I don't want to have to load you up after you break an arm. Illegal goods being used by Capitano. We're going to get to them first. Picker. Roger. I didn't realize you were so Absolutely. bad with women. Be able to sit up here. I'm not, that's the issue. I'll be alright, just have the shield ready to go. You act like a cat that doesn't like water. I'll run along, so will. Alright. We're moving. It's the third person that's described me as a cat. <laughs> Why being like a cat then? I'm not trying to be. Why do you have a horse if you can't ride it? I'm learning to ride on it. So you got one before you could... You didn't just get one to train or rent one. It was Tazim's idea. Then I see no problems with it. Ah, but if it was my idea... Utterly stupid. <laughs> I figured. No, I apparently need to bond with the horse and get it used to me since it's a battle horse and I'm most likely going to use it in battle and instead... You know, and as I'm sure you know. the last know, time you brushed it? Today, this morning. Every day, make yeah. sure I look after it. They're good creatures. I like horses' company more than most humans. Tell you the truth, that until a couple of days ago, I was pretty terrified of them. I'd heard stories of them kicking someone's head in. It's true, but a good war horse will do it for you, not against you. That's all I'm so hoping. <clears throat> hmm. And are you supposed to have your lessons? Um, well, Tazim's supposed to be taking me out on the daily, but it gets busy sometimes. <clears throat> I think it's the kind of thing that he wants to do himself, something about, uh, you know, raising a son and stuff. We're totally leaving him behind. Hmm. Then he should be faster than all us. No, that's what my father did with me. It's a fun hobby to do if you have it with them. Mm. I don't mean it as I want to teach you how to ride a horse, I'm merely making conversation. Oh, okay. No, um, he actually seemed really proud of me when he first gave me his first lesson. He was showing me off around town, That's making good. me walk through the main street over and over again. Had this grin on his face I don't normally see. I said, it's like the quill, it's like the blade, you can't be afraid of it, you need to respect it. Hmm. I'm learning that. What's his name? I haven't named it yet. Kazim said I should wait until I finish bonding with it first. That's cute. I have some ideas. Oh, like what? Yeah, you're gonna think they're stupid. The horse I left at home, his name was Arrow. Because I was young enough, I thought it was fast as an arrow. So I picked <laughs> that for stupid. No, I like that name, actually. 
No, you can't have it at mine. <laughs> um, well, there used to be tales in the Free Wharf about sailors coming across torrential tides and incredibly strong winds out of nowhere. They called it a maelstrom. I figured that might be a good name. Hmm. But as you figure it out? Yeah. I won't judge you on what name you give it. That's your bond. Oh, finally. That bad riding? No, I meant the, uh, the sun. Uh, it hurts my eyes. I was going to ask why you wear your hood. Uh, yeah, as a drow I can see in the dark, but the sun burns my eyes really badly, so I keep the hood up during the day. We totally left Cade there, by the way. <laughs> Behind us. Who? <laughs> yeah. two people standing there keeping watch. So very quickly, Shariq, go get eyes on. Go around the outside, count how many there are, tell us where they are, and we'll plan after that. We have a limited window. Hurry. well why I'm doing this and I can't spend it. I know. <clears throat> Six guards, in, uh, not including the man himself, he's wearing green. There's a wagon outside that little barn in the area. If we want, we can go out this way, loop all the way around, and we can jump the fence. We don't have to go through that funnel. <sighs> then that's what we'll do. One of those men <clears throat> has to be the merchant. He has to be taken alive. We take the man... We take the wagon full of shit. I'll grab our wagon. And then we go down that road to the Temple of Asora. And we make him talk. Okay. Alright. Who's the one assigned to take the merchant? Shriek. 
find out which one's the merchant, disarm him and make sure he can't run. I think I know which one it is just by looks. He has that merchant -y, you know, green sash. The rest of us will deal with the men. Okay. You said put him in the cart and no. take him out. Put him in the cart full of the goods. Take him down the road to a sorry. You know where we're going. Yep. Very quickly. You need same page. I got shackles. I'll take shackles. Who the fuck carries shackles? I don't want to question it. No wonder you're not. Is there an emergency? Not what? <laughs> They're leather. Just shackles. be grateful. Not... Oh, okay. No, I won't. You're <clears> here <throat> because I was worried you'd be bored. I don't want you here. Anyway, well, like I give was the shackles back. <laughs> Why are these <laughs> sticky, nice. Vesrin? <laughs> What? Ask no, questions. You got no answer to. Do you want me to get in position first before you attack? That way I can jump on the guy quickly. More than likely, I will give you 30 seconds. This is what's going to happen, so we're on the same page. Do not fuck this up. Sharik is going to grab the merchant. He's going to disarm him and grab him. Or Lena, you're going to keep anyone that goes after him off of him. Help him get the target into the wagon. Sharik's gonna drive the wagon towards the Temple of Asara. You're gonna grab the horse and go with him. We will come with you. Kill a man before you leave, please. I don't want to be overwhelmed. Good. The rest of us? They chose to be eyed for this and we cannot allow anyone to report that we were here. Let's get this done. 30 seconds, Sharik. <laughs> Every time. Disintegrate.
Tyler, you saw an arrow fly over. Everyone's attention is elsewhere. Don't you. Face the wall. Face the fucking wall. Face the fucking wall. I am a legal merchant of this province. Hands behind your back. When the guard hears about this, there will be repercussions. He's gonna put the clamps on. Okay. With me. Oh dear. If you fucking stop, I'll kill you. Going. Into the cart. Oh my goodness. Oh my head. <sighs> Don't wriggle too much or I'll have to cut your legs off. What is this about? I am a merchant of this province. If it's, if it's silver you want, I, I can pay. Oh shit, you're a merchant? How, how much to insure? I am a, a registered merchant of Nortis. Shit, what's your name? My name is Calvin Moreau. Oh god. Calvin Moreau. Does your mother hate you? Uh, how, the, how the devil would I know? Well, she gave you a shitty name like Kelvin. Well, what's yours? It can't be much better. You think I'm gonna give you my name? <laughs> can't, can't hurt me for trying, right? Uh, I want to say it's a, you know, a good attempt, but. Surprised. You lad got balls. Oh. Sure about brains, though. You need so many carts to carry my balls. All right. So you got a family? If it's spice you want. Well, you ain't telling much me about you, so I should I tell you about me, huh? I hold all the cards. At the moment, you see, my client happens. I'm not fibbing when I say my client is a very powerful man in notice and will be looking for me. Well, let's that hope he finds true. a body that's put together. Unless you start talking. If you want him, well, that's just it. What I got in my head is the only thing keeping me alive. For now, maybe we don't want what's in your head. Why don't you take a seat? Right. Right. Just that's fine. Now you're talking about your head, you sound pretty smart. I like to think so, considering what I've done. Think you're, you're pretty smart? Then you're smart enough to realize that if you run, she will be getting on that horse, and I bet that horse can run faster than you. And if she catches you, that's, that's very different to if I catch you. That's fair. But you fail to account for my clients, boys, will be riding over that hill any second now. All right. Should we start the clock? Just... Listen, if it's about the spice, just fucking take it. We got enough yeast to lose a few. How much you got in there? 
Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, you want to take a look for yourself? I could probably get 20% le lost without Al Capitano uh, cutting off my legs. All yours. Hmm. <clears throat> Such a tempting offer. How often do you make these shipments? Uh, yeah. Uh, now and then, uh, when the weather's right, you know, when I need a nice drink here in Nautis. Right. I like the trip, you know? Right, right. <clears throat> I do wonder whose men are going to be coming over that hill. Well, I hate to tell you, if they're with the me... Distance, the sound of a horse can be heard coming down the road. Do you want to... You a betting man? <laughs> See? I, uh... Whoa. That's when I know I've already lost. Shit. Yes. Just fuck the right up. Hold on. Hold on indeed. Well. What's your name, merchant? My name is Calvin Moreau, lead merchant of Nautis. Hmm. What's your actual name? I may. I have been been called Kenny in my uh, at the pub. I am so not in the mood for this. I've got it. 